Uh, uh, you know, let's talk about the big drop in oil prices we've seen. And uh, Peter Maguire is now joining us, CEO at Exim Australia. Peter, good, good morning. Good to have you on the program as always. Thanks very much. I mean, this is, I think, a bit of reduction, a perceived reduction in geopolitical risk after that Washington Post report, news story. Uh, but do you think this will uh, endure, Peter? What's your opinion? Demand and uh, maybe at the margin, demand perhaps will improve with China uh, trying to do things. Uh, but it's not been a great environment demand-wise as well. I mean, the largest private sector oil and gas company, Reliance, reported numbers yesterday here in India, uh, both on the oil and gas side and the petrochemical side as well, downstream. Uh, they've reported uh, slightly softish numbers. What's your sense of, as far as demand is concerned and the price of oil? Well, good morning, Prashant. I mean, you know, you, when you're looking at it, it's been very whipsawing and it's been incredibly tight, but also it's offered fairly good bandwidth as far as opportunity when that geopolitical premium was built in. And I feel as though it has been fairly much stripped out due to the, the no action in the sense of the Iran situation with Israel. So while that's backed out, it's always bubbling away that that can be reignited into price very, very quickly. But the market is the market and it's down fairly well. And it's been a big correction to the downside. So that has certainly been stripped out. I hear what you're saying as far as the reliance numbers, the China situation. There's plenty of oil. That's the that's the first part of the journey. The second part is it'll stay at these sort of numbers if you don't see anything as far as weather outages and something to happen in the Gulf of um, Mexico or the Gulf of Hormuz, naturally, with geopolitical if that was to re-engage, then prices would ratchet up quickly, as we've seen. But at the moment, it's certainly subdued and a stronger U.S. dollar. Mm. Um, hi, Peter. Great to have you on the show today. So there's obviously geopolitics on one hand and China on the other, right? And uh, in between, we had OPEC slashing the demand forecast for this year and next year. Yeah. Now, if the Chinese do come forward and offer something to stimulate uh, end-level consumer demand, uh, markets uh, will probably, you know, take it very well. But do you expect a quick flip up in, in the oil markets as well because of that, if indeed China delivers? Well, sir, uh, good morning. You know, that's the first part. It's hard to determine because it's very, very patchy what we're hearing as far as China. There's no real uh, examination in the sense of clarity. Uh, it's still hidden towards, you know, from an investor's standpoint. So, We've just got to wait and see how this is all going to be unwrapped over the next, say, two to three weeks, I would think, by the election, the US election, you would think that China would be pretty much gloves are off and this is what we're prepared to do. The stock market has been almighty, but that, that's the first part of it. The second part is, yes, all of these unknown factors, I'm understanding what OPEC's doing. I'm just sitting here at the moment looking at opportunity and at the moment no, no one can be long because the market's been severely pushed down. But... I think that there's probably another, we'll have another round of this. It'll get ratcheted back up and uh, maybe you've got the big hedge funds playing with it as well as far as opportunity. Okay, all right. Uh, Peter, always good to hear your thoughts. Short but crisp discussion this morning. Looking forward to having a chat with you in the days to come.